Hey guys, it is Caden here from Kepler Electronics and welcome to perhaps the most insane robot we've ever produced. This robot requires some backstory. After Pippin, we planned on making a more traditional robot with a more powerful lift and intake, but as seems to be the pattern for us this year, we didn't have enough time due to other obligations. This new robot wasn't ready in time for our next competition, so we had to improvise. I had a spare robot that I had put together much earlier in the season, experimenting with scissor lifts. This design had a mechanum drivetrain and seemed to be the perfect design to steal from. Remember how wall bots are legal for tower takeover? My idea was simple. A passively extending wall bot that extended using the mechanum wheels. Mechanum wheels can strafe using their angled rollers, so the plan was to simply program each side to strafe against each other to pull the robot apart and push it together. We started by using linear slides stacked together to connect each side and allow us to expand, and the plan was to use an 8 motor drive. Well, we decided the robot needed to be wider. Much, much wider. That was when we decided to take off the scissor lift sides and attach them to the chassis, as sort of extending wings to increase the area that we could block. I won't cover how we built the scissor lift here, that's plenty for its own video. Adding the scissor lift wings proved to be a great idea, and we decided to wire everything out and test. That's when the robot decided to just break. The problem lay in the linear slides Vex makes. The small linear slides that run on the inside of the rails are great, and they worked well, but the large linear slides that go on the outside of the rails can bend outward and let go, which was what was happening. We tried some methods to prevent this, but things just weren't working out. Remember how I said we were running out of time to make the other robot work? This robot had been thrown together in the approximately seven hours before we were supposed to leave. We were really cutting this close. At the point when the rails stopped working, we had about 20 minutes before we were supposed to leave. Now, you may think that we were toast, but we had an ace up our sleeve. Not caring how late we had to drive that night, we tore off all the slides and we replaced them with these standoff slides that we had been experimenting with. It's simply a bunch of standoffs put together with threaded rods, put through a high strength bearing. The high strength axles are only slightly larger than a standoff. Put two of these together and you have a passive linear slide. I like adding another rod on one side to prevent twisting, but two work well enough. We replaced the linear slides with two of these, and to help prevent sagging, we added a set of half slides to each end of the robot. We were now ready to test. We put the bot in the field, and we tried to expand. It worked. The slides didn't reach their whole range, simply due to the leverage put upon them by the sagging. The twisting of the edge slides also probably didn't help. It was not quite as wide as using the VEX slides, but it was still plenty wide, and we didn't have to worry about turning into a surprise multibot. The next problem we ran into was that the scissor wings couldn't contract cleanly. They got caught in the corners of the C-channel supports. This proved to not be a huge deal. The motors had enough torque to pull it over the lip. Throughout all of our testing, this didn't bend or break anything, so we just left it. With everything extended fully, this robot is over 6 feet wide, which is enough to cover almost the entire protected zone. There were a few things that didn't work well. First, the robot drives forward while extending. We're not really sure what caused this, but it was happening even before we added in the six motors. Also, rather than push, the robot tends to drive up onto other robots. This thing made it to one tournament and was a neat proof of concept. It's not the best wallbot. It's probably not even a super competitive wallbot. We managed to win a few matches and I'm really glad I got to compete with a wallbot and it seemed to strike fear into the hearts of the competitors. I learned that I really don't enjoy the passive driving style. If I'm going to play defensive, I'd much rather ram and push rather than just expand and sit. We have some really big plans for our next robot, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a like and subscribe. I've competed in VEX for years now, and this channel shares a lot of the robots I've helped work on and the tips and tricks I've used to make them better. Thanks again, and keep designing.